Welcome back to Zach Talk Shop, and we're going to kick off this episode of Zach Talk Shop with a special thing I like to call the HVAC Fake News. In the HVAC Fake News today, we have another story about different manufacturers. We have Train, we have Goodman. We have Nordine. We asked several different brands, including these three, what acronym that they most identified with as a company. Train chose MVP, Most Valuable Player, thinking that they are very important and a powerful brand. Goodman chose USA because they love the United States. And Nordine, with the most controversial choice, chose DWI. It's all about perspective when dealing with these different brands. For example, Hurricane Ties. Many of you know about these, especially those of us who live in coastal areas. Hurricane Ties are required to make sure that the unit doesn't float away during a storm surge. A lot of times when you're on a high platform, they're required to be screwed, the units that is, to the platform. For a company like Train, they envision using those Hurricane Ties up on a platform in a multi-million dollar home. But to a brand like Nordine, they imagine those hurricane ties are not really hurricane ties, but they're tornado ties. So when the trailer flies off the ground, it leaves the unit behind safe and secure. At a recent company retreat, Goodman dealers implored Goodman Manufacturing to take part in the Camp Town games that they had going on. One such game was Keep Away, and they implored Goodman Manufacturing to please allow the refrigerant to keep away from the outside world by stopping leaks. Goodman responded, new phone, who dis? Goodman Manufacturing has pioneered a new expansion valve that they're releasing next year, 2025. TXVs fail all the time and Goodman's tired of it personally. So they decided to create the human expansion valve. A man that works for $5 an hour that operates a crank based on the load inside your house. When he cranks down on the TXV, it lets less refrigerant into the coil, causes the superheat to go up, and you get less cooling. When it gets really hot outside, he lets off of it. More refrigerant goes in and the cooling capacity goes up. Just like a mechanical TXV, these TXVs can become stuck or tired, and instead of using AC Renew, Goodman recommends using Adderall to free up your TXV. That's enough of the HVAC fake news for now. Back to our regular program. You know what I always liked when doing these regular like install jobs for contractors, which in general I don't like because it's just a huge cluster of people. A lot of times the contractor is, he's a businessman and he doesn't think about the actual crews and you have a guy on top of another guy on top of another guy or three different trades working at the same time or some awful stuff like that. But every now and then there's kind of cool things that you can see on the job site. Just an interesting dynamic, if I say so myself. One such interesting dynamic is young guy, old guy. And we're not going to have the classic conversation of, you know, old guys are stuck in their way and stuff like that. No, it's not like that. But it's really interesting because you'll see like a crew of framers and there'll be like one guy, the English speaking guy, and then you'll have a bunch of young guys that are working, they're joking around, not in a bad way, but just like they're young and they're joking around and they're, they're young guys. Come on, they're young, they're having a good time. But then there'll be like an old guy, the trim carpenter. He'll be a guy that's like 63 years old and he's in charge of cutting all the trim and he's just been around the block for like a million years and he doesn't talk to anybody. He just listens to music. Sometimes it's classical music. I always like the guys who listen to classical music because it's like the total opposite my favorite is the Latino guys because they listen to music. I don't have any idea what they're saying. I have no idea what the guy's saying, but the music is just the best. And I'm, I'm sure that all Latin music is not the same. But the stuff you hear like a stereotypical Mexican restaurant, 
I just love listening to that stuff while I'm at work. It just puts me in a better mood. And I can't really do it right. It's like, da 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 And I can just imagine some lady with two fans dancing around and, like, confetti falling out of the sky. I don't know why, but I think it's great. I just love it. I love some of the dynamics of the job site. I like the old guy who, you know, he's been around the block. He's, he's been around for so long. If he thinks something's BS, he just doesn't even talk to it. It's like a guy comes up and says, hey, we're going to need you to move all this stuff. He just looks at him be like, huh. like Sam Elliott and just continues to do what he's doing. And the guy's like, he's just not, he's not even responding. That's because he knows you're full of crap. And it's great. It's a great thing to watch. When I was younger, I didn't understand. It's like, this guy's a jerk. He's not a jerk. He's been working with this crap for 40 years. And he can just ignore the stuff that's a bunch of crap, basically. I like that guy. That guy's all right. I think I am that guy now. You know, I'm on here talking on a podcast. But, I mean, once I get off the podcast, I go into my shop and not speak all day. And I'm fine with that. I don't see any people all day. Fine, fine as well. That's fine to me. I'm one of those hermits, which is fine. It's okay to be a hermit. It's all right, as long as you don't go to the extreme. It's like it's okay to keep a couple magazines in the bathroom, but you don't want to be a hoarder. It's the same sort of thing. My wife was watching hoarders earlier. By the way, I think we've all been there as well. Have you ever been to a house where the magazines were stacked to the ceiling? I actually have been to a house where they had crap piled in the house like that. And this was a guy. It was a mechanic, like a commercial mechanic, worked on big trucks. And I went to his house, and it was like hoarder. His wife was the hoarder, I guess. But still, I mean, he lived there, so he's a hoarder too, I guess. I've never been anywhere like it. It was the most orderly hoarding, though. It was like stacks of stuff. But it wasn't strewn around. It was like neatly piled and stacked and stuff. So it was like the most ordered hoarding ever. So, I mean, I, I guess that's a plus. I don't know. I've been to a few houses. It's, it, it's, it's just disgusting. It's not hoarding, but it's like the animal smells. Animal smells are the worst. It's like you're about to gag. It smells like urine. It's bad. Don't be that guy. If you run a home service business like painting, contracting, lawn care, or cleaning, your to-do list is endless. From hiring staff to mountains of paperwork, not to mention doing the actual work that pays the bills. Jobber is a mobile and online app that helps you organize your business and look professional. With Jobber, you can quote jobs, schedule your crew, invoice, and get paid all in one place. Try it free today at getjobber.com forward slash shop talk. TreeTech Tools has a wide variety of great test equipment. It covers industrial emissions, cooling and heating service, building performance, and electrical testing. Those and so many more. TrueTechTools.com. Use the Shop Talk discount code to support this show and save 8% off at TrueTechTools. Are you in search of gas? Well, that sounds like an odd question, but many heating technicians are, in fact, in search of gas. And you want to find it with this Yellow Jacket 69310 combustible gas leak detector. Safety first, find those leaks quickly. It has a fast response time, quality product because it comes from Yellow Jacket. You can find out more at yellowjacket.com. NAVAC is a leader in battery-powered industrial HVAC automotive tools. They've released vacuum pumps, and now they have the brake-free cordless power tube bender. The NTB7L runoff lithium batteries takes all the pain out of bending copper, and makes it automated and carefree. You can find out more at navacglobal.com. If you don't mind taking a minute and supporting this podcast by leaving a review, I'd appreciate it. I do read the reviews and enjoy reading the reviews, even the bad ones. So whatever podcast app you're on, feel free to write whatever you're feeling. I look forward to reading it, and I thank you for doing it. So one of the things I was thinking about doing was actually going back a little bit And trying to explain things, HVAC technical things, in a way that people can actually understand it. I never was the best at being, I wouldn't say technical, because I knew how to do my job. But I was never much for, like, class learning. I wasn't that kind of guy. I didn't like school. I didn't finish college. And I hated continuing education. 
but I did like to learn things through experience, which is the longest and hardest and most backwards way to do it is what I found. But, you know, when you have a learning disability like I do, where that's the only way I can do it, you just got to do it. So I figured maybe I could take a crack at explaining something in a way that makes sense to normal people so they can understand how to do their job, not just what they're doing, but how the machine works to a certain degree without having to go all off the deep end and taking it to 18th grade level. So in the spirit of that, I was going to do something that everybody else has done in the entire world, the refrigeration cycle. So everyone in the world has talked about this and I just like to keep it simple, not as simple as some, but just like a working man's language, like a normal language, like the people who eat at Arby's basically and the guys who eat at the Burger King and have the chicken fries. Man, I love the chicken fries, man. I'm going to go get me some chicken fries tomorrow. That reminds me. I'm going to write that down somewhere. I'm going to do a mental note about the chicken fries. But we'll cover some of this. We'll see how well this goes. And if this comes apart at the seams. If by the end of this I'm talking about what car I used to drive, then we'll know that I'm not going to do this again. So it starts in the compressor. A lot of people make comparisons about what the compressor is like. It's really simply just a, a pump. It's pumping refrigerant. In the act of pumping, it is, it's compression, obviously. It heats it up. It elevates the pressure. And it sends out a hot gas into the condenser coil. So basically, we're talking about the AC cycle. We're going to stick with the AC cycle. We're going to leave the heat pumps out for now. So when the refrigerant comes out of the compressor, it's a hot gas. A superheated gas. Now, that's a word we can talk about. It's going to be hard for a lot of people who just start out to kind of imagine what we're talking about. But I'm going to try to explain this in a way that makes sense. We'll get to superheat in a minute when we go to the evaporator coil. But it's a superheated gas. Just know it's a hot gas. That's all you got to really know right now. Spitting out hot gas. It's taking in cool gas. Spitting out hot gas. All that heat from the compressor is built up in that gas. And you got to get that heat out of it. Because after the condenser, you got your line set, goes inside the house typically to the evaporator coil. And at the evaporator coil, you're going to have a metering device. Now, before we get to that, I'm just going to tell you, the metering device wants to have liquid refrigerant at it. It doesn't want to have a mixture of liquid and gas. It doesn't want to have gas. It wants to have liquid refrigerant to do its job properly. So we got to get it some liquid refrigerant. So when the gas comes out of the compressor... It's superheated. We got to basically cool that gas down till it condenses into a liquid form. And the way that we accomplish that most of the time is with air. We move air across the condenser coil where that gas is flowing. We use a fan to do so. That fan is engineered to put a certain amount of CFM through that coil. That's why cleaning the coil is so important. Because when they build these things, they build it so a certain amount of air goes across that coil so it has a certain efficiency. Every little bit of dirt that appears on it, every different kind of fan motor that's not properly matched may affect how cool that refrigerant gets, how subcooled it gets. Let's talk about that. How subcooled the refrigerant gets. That refrigerant's going to come out of the compressor. It's going to be hot. We're going to need to cool it down. The air is coming across the coil through the fan. The refrigerant starts to cool down. And as it cools down, it'll reach a point where it condenses and starts to turn into liquid. All right, that point is very important because at the point where it turns into liquid, we got to take note of that because we want liquid making it to that expansion valve inside so it can do its job properly. We can't just have it right at the point where it turns into liquid or we risk really losing that liquid and having it boil off into gas on the way to the evaporator coil and to that metering device. So we want to keep cooling that liquid down a number of degrees so we can ensure that we have a nice solid column of liquid going to the metering device. So we keep cooling it down below that saturation point where it condenses. And every degree below that point is called subcooling. So that liquid is subcooled so we can ensure it's a solid liquid column going to the evaporator coil. The condenser is designed so you get a certain amount of subcooling. You can typically find that on the nameplate. But something normal is anywhere from 4 or 5 all the way up to the teens. It depends on the unit. 
depends on the configuration. Sometimes it changes based on what you match it with. You got to think about that because you match it with different things. People tend to sling things together to get a certain sear rating. And sometimes it's a different configuration, requires a different amount of subcooling. So you always have to check that. Sometimes you have to change orifices, all sorts of stuff. Let's not get into that. Let's not muddy the water here. So we got our cool, subcooled liquid. When I say cool, it's not really all that cool. It's Let's say it's 90 degrees. It could be relatively warm, really, compared to uh, what you call cool. But that's cool compared to where it was at. It was much hotter when it entered the condenser coil from the compressor. So our cooler, we'll call it cooler, cooler liquid is heading into the evaporator coil. It's going down that line, setting that liquid line. It's going to the evaporator coil, and we're going to hit a metering device. Now, a metering device, simply put, is a restriction. It's a calculated, engineered restriction in the line meant to lower the pressure of that refrigerant. So when it goes through the metering device, it goes through at a lower pressure, it expands in the evaporator coil, and that's the point of this whole thing. Refrigeration is all about changing state from liquid to gas back and forth. Because when you change state in the refrigerant, that's when it can do all that heat transfer that you want it to do. Because what happens when you, let's say, you add heat to water? It boils. It changes from water to steam, we'll say. It changes into a gas. So that's what we want to happen here. But we're not going to put a bunch of heat into it. Well, we are going to put heat into it in the air, but we're also going to lower the pressure through that metering device so that expansion causes that liquid to boil off into gas and to cool down. And it cools down a, a decent amount. You could have coils that operate at 40 degrees, 45 degrees, or maybe the filter's dirty and it's operated at 35 degrees and sometimes a little bit lower until it freezes up. But it's much cooler than that warm liquid that's coming in. So it gets into the evaporator coil, it boils off, and starts sucking up that heat. Because we kind of calculated this. The engineers are like, all right, we got that refrigerant going in there. It's expanding. When things expand out and evaporate, it sucks heat from the surrounding area. And that air moving across the coil, the heat gets sucked out of that air, and the air cools down. And voila, everybody's comfortable inside. So that heat from the air going through your air handler or through your furnace, through that evaporator coil, gets taken out. Air cools, and the heat's now in the refrigerant. So that refrigerant absorbs the heat and starts to warm up. It's already boiling off. By the time it exits the evaporator coil, it's all the way boiled out. It's actually warmed up beyond that point which all of it is boiled. So now it's all gas, and it continues to heat up. Now every degree above that point at which it turns to all gas is superheat. The gas becomes superheated. And everything is calculated, so there's a certain amount of superheat at the compressor. And the reason why that is, because when it comes back to the compressor, you don't want it to overheat the compressor. The compressor's got to be cooled by that gas coming back, which is called the suction gas. So that cool gas comes back and cools the compressor. Now, certain issues arise that cause that to go awry and can damage the compressor, but we'll talk about that at a separate time. In fact, I'm going to keep it right there because I don't want to put too much right here in the first one. But I hope that helps. I hope that's kind of a plain Jane way of talking about it. Nothing too awful technical. We got superheat. We got subcooling. We know what type of state of matter we're dealing with in different parts of the system. Next time we'll talk about coming back to the compressor, how it travels back, what happens, and get into a little bit more about troubleshooting some of the odd things that happen in the refrigerant system, some of the really weird things I've seen over the years, because once the system's installed, it's all downhill from there. It's never going to be that clean again, and hopefully, if it's installed properly, it's never going to work as good as it did that first day, really. Unless it was installed improperly, it's all downhill because of dirt, because of time, because of ductwork degradation, insulation degradation, and just any sort of things. If you live on the coast, after that first day, the fins start falling off the outdoor unit. <laughs> well, I hope that helps. I really do hope it helps. I hope the plain Jane way of talking, and it's the way I've always dealt with things. I've thought of things. Uh, I've had people tell me that I'm smart before. Those people were obviously mistaken. But the only reason that I 
might have looked that way is because I keep things simple in my mind so that I can understand them. When things get too complicated or I try to complicate things, then it gets all mixed up and turned around. So if I can break them down, make them simple, which a lot of times things are simple and people try to make them complicated. I think they do that just, I don't know if they do it so they look smarter or they justify like their teaching position. I don't know what it is, but things are often not as complicated for useful knowledge, like what you need to do your job. You can make things more complicated, but you're never going to need it. And I'm trying to give you what you need. And I hope you feel like you got what you need. Maybe learn something, got a refresher on something. That's me. That's your refresher for today. I hope you guys have a good time until next time we talk. God bless all of you. And I'll see you on the next one.